Hello, welcome to Emotional Badass, where Moxie meets Mindful. I'm Nikki Eisenhower, your host, life coach, and psychotherapist. And on today's episode, I'm discussing part of my own story and a lesson from Hopi Indian Chief White Eagle on how to get through COVID with grace. Now, there are parts to this pandemic that honestly scare me beyond a new virus. I've witnessed people that I know personally and have known professionally for many years. I have witnessed people since the beginning of 2021 lose their spiritual grounding, lose their connection to their spiritual practices. These are people that I would have described in 2019 as authentically kind, grounded, spiritually loving, principled. And I've witnessed many lean away from their practices and beliefs and lean into scarcity mindset, hate, rage, blame, despair. I work with mindful seekers I surround myself with mindful people very intentionally. To see mindful, intentional, grounded people process this scary time, this human dilemma of a pandemic in such ways has made me scared for humanity. When we nurse and nurture hate and rage and blame and powerlessness, guess how we feel? We wind up feeling Hateful, rageful, blaming, and powerless. Only darkness would like this strategy as a life plan. This is not a useful strategy, no matter what is happening in our external world. Why would any of us do this to ourselves? In middle school, we were all susceptible to peer pressure, to fearing what others thought. We were terrified to stand up and true speak for fear of shame, blame, and being ostracized for not fitting in for being other than. Similar tactics are being used to control behavior, to control thought, to control the sharing of information, as have been used in middle schools in the United States for decade after decade after decade after decade. These same strategies are used in dysfunctional family systems. I am a systems theorist in how I practice. What that means is that I am an expert in relatability. Each family system is like a baby mobile. You know the thing that hangs above the baby crib? When that baby reaches up with his or her foot or hand, and swats at that baby mobile, the entire baby mobile is affected and moves. Each piece moves a little differently, but each piece is affected. Our family systems are this way because we are creatures who relate to one another. We are social creatures. It's how we were born. It's how we have been made since the beginning of time to ensure our survival is that we are tribal We need each other. We're social. So our family systems are like this baby mobile. And whenever one person is being affected, so are the other players. It is so in our human tribe as well. When I outed the story of childhood sexual abuse in my family, I did that as a young adult woman in my early 20s. I was not supported by my large Catholic family. I basically hung in the wind, not really being believed for about six months. During that time, I had been told if I didn't have a relationship with the abuser, I couldn't have a relationship with my mother. In that six months, one of my sisters admitted abuse and we went to press charges. At that time, I was no longer alone with her support. And then my second sibling, my third sister, 
there are three of us, admitted her abuse too, and we pressed charges. Now, actions were taken to make it seem like I had some support at that time. But behind the scenes and beneath the surface of each player in my family system, there was anger, there was rage, and I was made the scapegoat. If my family members to this day, in this very moment, if they were administered some kind of magic truth serum, they would be able to tell you that they are still angry at me, that I am the one to have received the blame for breaking up the family, for the family feeling public shame. My dad, the abuser, had worked for a television station, the CBS affiliate, for between 20 and 25 years. I can't quite remember anymore. So his television station did the longest story, and it hit every television station in New Orleans. The story was on the news, and people came out of the woodwork from our histories, old teachers, old friends' parents. They reached out in attempts to support me and us. But within the family system, I was the scapegoat receiving the rageful anger. The story I did at the Moth, the Moth is a storytelling competition. I did that in Denver to test myself right before launching Emotional Badass. And this is the story that I got on stage and told to 300 some odd people. Was this time in my life when all of this was crashing down? And the truth of it was that it was the combination of blame and shame that had me check myself into the psych unit. It was my own codependency, my own blame of myself that I hadn't saved my sisters. I spent 12 hours pressing charges in a police station where the detectives put me in a room with a recorder. And I attempted at the age of 23 to get my dad to incriminate himself. At the end of that call, I fell to the ground, withered, exhausted. The next day, I checked myself into a psych unit. That's what my story was for the moth to see if I could really be vulnerable with my story and do this show the way that I wanted to. As these charges were brought onto my dad in my early 20s, it was weeks after my first nephew was born. Little spiritual side note here about intuition. Well before I knew I was an intuitive, my memories of abuse came back to me when I trace it back the same week that my sister was pregnant with her first child. My dad had been accused of abusing his toddler children that he had before he met us. When they were very little, they were toddlers and babies. And my mother knew this. Now, from the outside looking in, when I share that story, it seems very reasonable to most people to be mad at him. Mad, upset, angry at my mother for having the knowledge that he had been accused. And my mother, for knowing that he had been accused of sexually abusing two other children and basically serving us on a platter to a child sex predator. As I share this story, I need you to know that this is my story, but I can share it because I know it's not just my story. I have heard countless versions of this same story from so many survivors The breaker of the secret is often the scapegoat. All the anger that was rightly meant for my dad and my mom was aimed at me by extended family and my siblings. And it still is in large part to this day. Family systems often blame the squeaky wheel instead of the real culprit. It has not shocked me because I am an expert in family systems. So how COVID has been processed nationally and internationally has not surprised me, though it has disappointed me. Because our larger family system beyond our specific families is this human tribe, this big human family. There is a similar blame game, sort of shell game that is happening that news and media, social media algorithms is pushing. If you or anyone gets sick with COVID, I suggest and ask you to consider that the thing to blame is a virus. Medical and government officials, 
they all know that every pandemic tends to take three to five years at a minimum to work through the population, to come to a new normal. We've been collectively lied to, the line in the sand having never ever made sense at the one year mark or a year and a half mark. If you stay mad at people who aren't vaccinated, it's a lot like my family staying mad at me for speaking up about my concerns. An individual session when someone is angry in this way at unvaccinated people and they say, I just don't understand. My question, my challenge is, do you really want to understand a differing perspective or do you want to judge? Do you want to jump on this anger bandwagon because it's popular? Because anger is a primary way that modern humans connect with each other instead of through grace, forgiveness, ease, and peace? Or do you want to get angry because you read an opinion or a blog that encouraged and promoted righteous anger and blame? Do you want to rage because your inner child wants what he or she wants right now? Does your inner child feel that the medical and government authorities These authority figures that we look to in times of crisis, that they have operated as if we are all in some kind of road trip to hell. And that very naturally, just like any child who has ever been on a long road trip, yells to the driver, hey, how much longer are we there yet? Our officials have been playing this game with us that says, yeah, we'll be there in five more minutes. And when we ask again, We'll be there in five more minutes. And when we ask again, if these other cars would just get off the road, we would be there in five minutes. When that is not true, we are so much further than five minutes away. Don't be the kids in that car on that road trip. To take care of our mental health, we are tasked with rising above We are tasked with taking care of our own inner children and saying, I'm so sorry that the people in charge said we'd be there in five minutes. By rising above, by offering yourself some larger understanding than just your discomfort in this moment can help you see that the road trip is going to take longer than the people driving keep saying. Understand for the sake of your own sanity as a choice to process this way for your own sanity. That the powers that be keep saying five minutes and blaming the other cars on the road instead of acknowledging that we're hours away. Rightly so, that's going to piss everyone off who's in the car. I challenge you to rise above, to take your power back and ground yourself, to stay true to your awakened and spiritual path, to disallow anger gremlins that are so ready to feed because they're not getting what they want when they want. I want to end this episode sharing a lesson from Hopi Indian chief White Eagle. These are his words about COVID. He says, this moment that humanity is living through can be considered a door or a hole. The decision to fall into the hole or go through the door is yours. If you consume information 24 hours a day with negative energy, constantly nervous with pessimism, you will fall into this hole. But if you take the opportunity to look at yourself, to rethink life and death, to take care of yourself and others, you will go through the door. Take care of your home. Take care of your body. Connect with your spiritual home. When you take care of yourself, you take care of others at the same time. Do not underestimate the spiritual dimension of this crisis. Adopt the perspective of an eagle that sees everything from above with a broader vision. There is a social demand in this crisis, but also a spiritual demand. The two go hand in hand. 
Without the social dimension, we fall into fanaticism. Without the spiritual dimension, we fall into pessimism and futility. Grab your toolbox and use all the tools at your disposal. Learn to resist by the examples of the Indian and African peoples. We have been and continue to be exterminated. But we never stopped singing, dancing, lighting fires, and having joy. Don't feel guilty for feeling lucky in these difficult times. Being sad and without energy doesn't help at all. Resilience is resilience through joy. You have the right to be strong and positive. You have to maintain a beautiful, cheerful, and bright posture. This has nothing to do with alienation, ignorance of the world. It is a strategy. When we walk in the door, we have a new view of the world because we have faced our fears and difficulties. This is what you can do now. Serenity in the storm. Keep calm, meditate daily. Make a habit of encountering the sacred every day. Demonstrate resilience through art, joy, trust, and love. This is from Hopi Indian Chief, White Eagle. I find a lot of peace in his words. A lot of reminders that it is my job to emotionally and mentally take care of myself. Is it your job to emotionally and mentally take care of yourself? Are you taking radical responsibility of yourself in this way? Please be realistic and loving. As the Buddha teaches, holding on to anger, resentment, and hatred is like drinking poison and hoping it will kill someone else. Be wary of people who teach that it's right to drink such poison. Please put blame where it truly belongs. On nature, on a virus, and on these control issues we have as human beings where we don't want to practice the serenity prayer. The serenity prayer is, God or the universe, to your understanding, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. My challenge to you is that you do have the wisdom to know the difference. Don't drink this anger Kool-Aid that is passing around. If you are interested in learning from me and with me and with each other about the emotional boundaries that it takes to be able to block out the dysfunction of the world and live an awakened life that is more calm, more centered, more peaceful, more joyful in mind, body, and spirit than you might have ever allowed yourself to believe is possible for you, then I invite you to come sign up for the Boundaries course right now. We're going to blink and October is going to be here. Just like in all of these episodes that you listen to, it is very hard for me to explain to you what exactly you will get out of my course but I know that you will leave learning things that you couldn't have known that you needed to learn, just like my episodes. This course is for anyone who really wants to face their own empowerment, let go of their own control issues, and learn to flow more with grace for themselves and for other people. I teach from a place of compassion for all, not because it's hokey, but because it works. Compassion is a heart-centered emotion, and when we send it out, we get it back. And this life requires more compassion, more patience, more grounded diligence and self-care than any of us were really taught. This is what my course is for. This is who my course is for. Any and all are welcome who can show up with an open mind and an open heart, ready to transcend what weighs you down. If you're interested in that, come sign up right now or learn more at emotionalbadass.com backslash boundaries. Use code earlybird21 to save if you pay in full or choose a payment plan. Use that code 
before you can't use it. That's the early bird code. If you're on Patreon, definitely find the code. All of our Patreon members always get the best discounts to every single thing that we offer. Light, love, and ground in peace. I wish that for myself, and I wish that for you. I'm an emotional badass. You are an emotional badass. And together we are where Moxie meets Mindful. And I will see you right here next week. Bye-bye. 